All right, looks like we're live. Hopefully we are. I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com and the English Fluency Guide. Welcome to another live video here on YouTube. Today we're going to talk about the secret to spontaneous speech. So this is really the same thing as fluent speech. It just means being able to speak without thinking or hesitating or translating. Uh, I will say though at the beginning of this that it's not a bad thing to think in your head. Sometimes, like even right now, I need to maybe think a little bit about what I'm going to say. The problem is when you get stuck trying to think and translate uh, and you're more trying to plan out rules rather than actually trying to speak fluently. All right, it looks like, look at that. We got uh, Asia represented over there. Tsubasa, nice to see you there. And I can't read the Hanguru, but uh, hello, nice to see you. Hopefully everybody, good morning, long time. No see, Ganshim back over there. Ohio Drew Sensei, Ohio and welcome back. <laughs> Good morning to everyone. Uh, so this should be actually uh, not that long of a video, but I always say that, and then the videos are long. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Ramad Hans from Kurdistan, nice to see you there. K Chang Ni, I can't read that Chinese. I know, I know, I can like guess what that is, but <laughs> let's see. Well, Olympia is back. Oh my heart. Okay. All right. Looks like everybody's excited. <laughs> Always oh, good to see over here. A good sign. A good sign. Let's see, make sure I don't miss anybody. Well, Nils is back. Look at that. Martha, nice to see you there. Glad to see you. Well, it's a pleasure to see everybody over there. Uh, let's get right into the lesson. So I wanted to begin, as I usually do, with a quick story. Well, and Sam is back. Sam Walton, the famous Sam Walton. Uh, nice to see everybody here. Uh, so this is an interesting story. Uh, I want to, before I tell the story though, just to give kind of an example, I often remind people of this, uh, and especially if new people are watching the channel, I want to tell people right at the beginning of this video that there are really two ways of learning English or any other language. The first is learning English as a second language, where you're basically trying to learn the rules like a linguist, uh, and you're mostly using your native language to try translate things in your language into English. So you begin by thinking about something in English, or excuse me, thinking about something in your native language, and then you want to translate that in your head before you speak. And if you can do this process quickly enough, you can kind of speak fluently. But it's much easier if you learn English as a first language instead, and that's what we'll be talking about in this video. Uh, so I really want to talk about communicating spontaneously, uh, and I do cover this a lot on the channel, but I thought this is a slightly different angle, a way I could talk about this uh, to help more people understand how this process works. Uh, so let's say I'm a, uh, let's just say I'm a French native French speaker. I'm not. I don't speak French, but let's imagine I am. Um, and I'm learning. Actually, now let's take, we'll take, let's, let's imagine I'm like an, an Arabic speaker because that's like a completely different language than English, how it's written and spoken. Um, so if I have a word that I'm trying to learn, like I, I learn a word like, make sure this fits over here. Super. Uh, it doesn't need to be capitalized, but let's just say I'm going to uh, capitalize it here. Uh, super. So I'm trying to learn a word and I don't know any English at all. And the first word I learn is super. And I don't really have a way of understanding that. Uh, so I just get a translation through my native language. So I'm going from Arabic into English. I don't know what the Arabic word for super is. You can put it in the chat if you like. Uh, but this is basically how people are learning the language. So anytime I want to say something is super, then I would first think about that. Uh, I would kind of think about what I want to say in Arabic and then I would translate that into English and then say the word super. But I wanted to tell you a quick story about me as a native English speaker and how I learned this word. So I didn't learn this word through Japanese or Arabic or French or any other language. Uh, I learned it as a native speaker. So all in the English language. All right, uh, so this is an interesting story. Uh, if we begin with the word, we just have the word super. And I wanted to use a basic word like this just because it's an example that even a child can understand. Uh, and it's a common word, but hopefully it will make you think a little bit differently as I give you this story. So when I was a young, a young boy, you know, five years old, six years old, seven years old, I knew who Superman was, like the superhero, you know, I knew about superhero. 
Superman. And I knew that, wow, this Superman, it, so you have like a regular man and then like Superman. He's just like amazing and powerful and does things better uh, than other people. He can fly and other things like that. So I learned that, like I, I knew what a man was. Like I could tell like man and woman, I knew what a man was. And so when I learned Superman as the, like the comic book character in a movie, I understood this was a person who was more powerful, better at a higher level than regular people. Now what was interesting though, I didn't really think much about the word super. I just learned, oh, okay, I guess, you know, it's just, it's like this guy is like better than other things. So that super must mean better. Or if you go to like McDonald's or something, you have like super size. Now I don't think that's even offered at McDonald's anymore, but if you want to get a super size of something, it means you're getting a larger version of it. So a regular drink might look like this, but a super size is like that. This is why Americans are probably fatter than they should be. Uh, excuse me, but anyway, so this is the super size over here. Now, here's the interesting story. So I was at a, uh, I think it was like a, like a play or an opera or something like that. Uh, probably an opera. Uh, I don't remember how old I was. I, I was still young. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm watching this show. So I'm sitting in the, uh, let's just put some chairs down here. Here's the show. And you have some people up, up here, you know, singing. I'm sorry, these are bad <laughs> pictures of people, but here I am, I'm sitting down here and I'm, I'm there with my mom uh, and I'm watching the show. And I noticed uh, that you have uh, like, there were words up here because you know the opera was in Italian or whatever language they were singing, probably Italian. And I, I saw there were words up here. And I knew like, oh, look at that. You've got, you've got like the words up there. And my mom said, yeah, those are the super titles. The super titles. The super titles. Now I said, oh, that's interesting because I heard, like, when you're watching a movie, make sure I fit this in here, or even if you're watching this right now, uh, this is a live version, so the subtitles, the subtitles will not. Uh, be ready until after the video is finished. So if you're looking for subtitles and you're watching live, you'll just have to come back and watch it again later. Uh, but when I, when I knew about that, I already knew about subtitles. So I had heard about that, I'd seen movies, and I just knew that was the word, you know, subtitles. But when I heard, oh, that's interesting, super titles. Super titles, that's for the words above the screen rather than under the screen. So we call them super titles. I think sir titles, sir titles is also another word for these, but the idea of super titles, something being over above what we have, and this is a physical understanding of, look at that. We have this thing over something else and the subtitles are under the video. And so as I learned that, I understood what super meant, not because I was getting a definition of it, but because I continued to get lots of examples. And again, this is only like one, one more example. But each time you get another example of that thing, that, that puts another layer onto your fluency and uh, basically coming from your understanding. And that's what enables you to speak spontaneously. So because I was, I was feeding my brain, I mean, in this case, this is my mom teaching me something. She said, oh, yeah, those are the super titles, the super titles. So I could have said, oh, yeah, look at the subtitles above the play or above the movie or whatever, above the, the opera. But she said, no, those are the super titles. So isn't that interesting? So at that moment when I heard that, like you can feel that in your brain where you where you hear like, oh, look at that. That's interesting. Like even if you already know what super means, here's another use of it that you probably hadn't thought about, especially non-native learners. Uh, most of them are familiar with the word subtitle and they might even know, OK, sub means under just the same way you might have. Here's some water here and a submarine uh, is like under the water. So sub marine submarine or subpar 
this is from golf par is like what you need to what you should normally be getting how many times you hit the ball before you get it into the little hole so subpar is kind of like below that like you're not very uh, very good or you're not doing something very well like oh I just tried this new like pasta restaurant and it was kind of subpar it wasn't very good all right so as you're learning these things this is the way a native learns it so you just learn this thing too as a first language as a first language all right so I wanted to give you this quick example uh, just to show you that really what we need for spontaneous speech is lots of input so I don't become a better speaker by repeating the word super over and over and over again I, I become a better speaker by understanding what the word really means in English okay so I'm not trying to learn it through a translation I'm trying to get more connections of the word just like we've got sub here we've got sub here we've got I'll write the word sub submarine a submarine and so here we have what well, you can guess what marine probably means marine refers to the water the ocean that kind of thing like a marine so if we have marine life marine life means animals that live in the water in the ocean marine life and so as you get all these connections again I'm not doing this through another language I'm not using Chinese to understand what something means I'm getting more varied examples of these things to really understand them and when I really understand something that's when I speak all right so two things about this video uh, that I wanted to make clear at the beginning here uh, the first one is that when you're learning something like this again we don't want to try to get translations or even definitions of words we want to kind of form a natural definition or understanding of a word by getting lots of examples of it so I've given you these with like the word super and the word or the word part here uh, sub so this would be like a prefix uh, even if we have a word like subscribe similar kind of thing so a slightly different meaning uh, we might have like subpar, submarine, or subtitle. But as you get these different meanings, you will come to understand, oh, that means like under or below. But you understand that naturally without, without someone telling you what that means. You discovered that yourself by me giving you this example. Okay? So when you feel confident, when you know the thing really well, it will come out from you spontaneously, automatically. So you will know, oh, wow, I can talk about something being like super good, like really good or super in some other way in the same way we have super titles okay now the other thing is uh, is kind of a like a, a tricky thing about language learning is that people feel comfortable with a particular way of learning even if it's not working for them very well so many people will continue to try to uh, practice try, try to practice their speaking or they will continue to study more and more even though that's not really helping them become a more confident speaker but they do it because it's comfortable to do it it's the way they know how to do that so this is why when I'm trying to show you a different way of doing things like learning English as a first language rather than learning English as a second language I want to do it in easy small simple very even tiny steps like giving you an example of one word or two words or word parts things like that that help you understand the language and then they get you used to feeling more comfortable and more confident and these these two things work together all right uh, George says it's omni. omni omni means like everything omni so if we have a word like omni I mean you could even if you get a word or a like a prefix or a suffix something like that like these kind of things so omni like if something is omnipresent it means it's everywhere so you could think like God is omnipresent like something that's uh, present in every place in every time every location omnipresent or omnip we, we, we would say like omnipotent p-o-t-e-n-t -E excuse me omnipotent but we say it as omnipotent 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 means all-powerful so omni just means all or everything all right but as you get more examples well I don't want to just give you like Omni and then here's a definition of it the definition actually comes from your understanding and that comes from getting lots of varied examples of that thing okay 
What does it mean, prompt? Or what does prompt mean? Prompt means like, well, it could mean different things, actually. Uh, if you mean prompt like being on time, uh, then like I am prompt to the meeting uh, or like, at a particular location, I am prompt for that thing. Or I could prompt you by getting you to do something at a certain time. So I say, okay, we're going to start speaking in three, two, one, go. And so that's your prompt. That's me telling you, okay, now it's time to do something. But again, uh, the point is not to get lots of definitions of words. So we don't really want translations and we don't really want definitions either. And one of the problems with definitions is that it makes, it's, it's kind of telling you a way to think about a word. Uh, but almost always you will, you will expand or you will deepen that definition as you get more examples. So it's important to understand the meanings of words in situations. And then as you get that same word used in other situations, usually related situations, you will come to understand that word better. Okay. So hopefully this makes sense. The basic idea is that we want to get lots of, uh, lots of varied examples of things that really help us understand because the understanding is what enables the spontaneous speech. So if we don't want to think and translate through our native language, we shouldn't learn that way. Okay, let me say that again. If we don't want to think and translate through our native language, we should not learn that way. So how you learn is how you speak. I've repeated this many, many times. How you learn is how you speak. Okay, but it's also important if, you're, if you've been learning for many years, like the typical way of trying to study grammar rules or translations, and now you want to switch, you have to also have your brain feel comfortable with that. Because typically, if you don't know a word, the first thing you will do is look it up in a dictionary and usually get like a translation through your native language. But the better way to do that is to try to get a bunch of varied examples. So you can do that with YouTube or Google, you know, anything, even like this. So I can type in a word in Google like super and like, or chat GPT or whatever, and just say, give me examples of words with this, with this, uh, it could be like a prefix or a suffix or just something that has the word super in it. And as you get these different examples, the, the collection of, of these things together, it forms a network and that's what uh, enables you to speak fluently. Okay. So you become fluent in individual words and phrases as you learn them, and then you just do that with more words and phrases. And that's how you get fluent very quickly, and you're just doing it like a native. Okay? Hopefully this makes sense. Uh, I knew it wouldn't take a long time to explain this. It really is a simple idea, and I have covered it many times on the channel before, but I thought this was a helpful example, uh, especially because it came from my own childhood, me learning the language as a native speaker. So this is what it means to learn a language as a native speaker or to learn it as a first language. All right, let's go back and check chat. Now, if people have questions about uh, anything, whatever, it could be related to this or not, uh, I'm happy to answer all those right now. All right, uh, let's see. Martha right there from Venezuela. Nice to see you. And Ilder, nice to see you. Uh, let's see. TDT from uh, Ottawa. A, new a newcomer. Yes, you'd say I'm a newcomer. A newcomer. Uh, Hisako says, hi, from Aomori, Japan. Always fun to listen to you. Big thanks to you. It's my pleasure. Uh, Amy's from uh, Indonesia. Let's see. And again, Sam says, hi, Sandra. Nice to see you again, teacher. Gansham, super mighty man. Yes, super duper. Yes, you can all say super and super teacher. Yes, you guys are great. Uh, Guadalupe, hello there. Uh, let's see. I think I answered that one already. Vitaly says, nice to see you from Vicrain, uh, Ukraine. Excuse me. Uh, Nils, I love your examples. Glad to hear it. Glenn Sham, do you mean subtitles under the screen and super titles over the screen? Yes, that's correct. And submerge, yeah. So the same idea to submerge something is like, you could have like merging something and you could submerge something as well. So we want to put something like under something else. And that could be a physical idea or a figurative one. Uh, looks like Pavel, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, from Poland. Uh, let's see, okay, I answered that question already. Solomon says sanctions. I don't know if you're asking what that means. You left me on red. 
you left me on red. Are you asking like what, what that means or if there's like a, a question about that, let me know what you mean. Neil says, is there a difference between could and might or both have the same meaning? Well, the, the way to answer questions like this is to look for examples where they do have the same meaning or where they don't. So all we need is one counter example to maybe change the way we think about something or to answer a question like that. So could, so when, when can we use could uh, without being able to use might for an example? So if we have could, like I could, I could come to the party. I need to stop speaking and writing at the same time. I could come to the party. Now, if we change this to I might, do these sentences have the same meaning? I could come to the party or I might come to the party. Now, could, here we have like the possibility of doing something. So I could come to the party. So if I'm thinking, well, what should I do tonight? Uh, I don't have any plans, so I could. I could go to a movie, I could go swimming, I could go meet my friend, I could go have dinner someplace, I could come to the party, or I could go to the party. But might, and make sure I'm answering this question if I didn't like, make sure we got that correctly. Uh, yeah, so if I might come to the party, we're talking about how probable it is, like to what degree. So let's say I have like, if we're going to measure this. So if we have, let me just draw like from zero to 100%. So I might come to the party is like, I don't know, like 70%. I might, I might come to the party. Or let's say if I'm, if I'm definitely coming, I'm definitely coming, I'm absolutely coming, that's 100%, all right? But 70% like, yeah, I might or I might not. So here we have an example where they mean two different things, all right? Now we could also talk about like, uh, like could you, could you, or like might, might you do something like in that, in that, in that case, uh, we can use them in the same way. So this is an example of when they would have a different meaning, but sometimes they could have the same meaning. Like might, let's see, or like could you help me? So I say, could you help me? Uh, or if I might, like someone might say like might, like might you help me or might you be able to help me? Might you be able to help me? And in that case, they're basically the same meaning where you're just like, is it possible for you to do something? Okay, so here we're talking about how probable like what is the possibility of something like will I or will I not? Uh, but again, like we have an example where they do mean something the same basically uh, or where they mean different things, all right? So you're looking for counter examples where we just really need one counter example or one example to show uh, that they do mean the same thing or they do not. <coughs> all right, hopefully that makes sense. Let me know uh, if it does not. All right, uh, let's see. See, Cornelio says, good night, teacher. What would the meaning of getting things short? Getting things short. I don't know. What give me more more context for that. I don't know. To get things, to get something short. Yeah, I mean, it, it it depends on what you're what you're talking about specifically. Like like and this is why it's always important to understand vocabulary with the situation. So I gave this example before, I'm trying to connect the vocabulary with a situation rather than uh, just like looking at the words by themselves like they have meanings uh, beyond the, the, the context or the situation. So vocabulary always means something in a situation. All right, just like I showed here, like the meaning of might it means like you probably will do something or like might you be able to do something uh, is asking like is that possible? So possible versus probable. So they don't always have the same meaning <coughs> or they can't uh, or they, they are not always used the same way. <laughs> 
All right, we'll get to that question in a minute. Uh, but anyway, hopefully this makes sense. Uh, but let me know if it does not. Let me see here if I'm still. What was that question before? So getting so getting getting things short. So let, let me let me give you an example of short uh, in the same way that a native would come to understand this. I don't know what your specific example is from to get something short. Uh, but here here's a meaning it could come from. So it might. It might come from this. Like it could come from this. It might come from this. It's a possibility. It could. It might come from this. Um, so let's say I have uh, five dollars in my pocket. I've got five dollars in my pocket, uh, and I want to buy uh, a dress. So here's a dress or a shirt or something uh, that's six dollars. So I might say in this example, I am one dollar. short. I'm one dollar short. So short meaning like this. So we can have long and short. We're trying to compare something. So you can think about it like I have five dollars. I want to get to six, but oh no, I'm one dollar short. I'm one dollar short. Okay. So I don't know what specifically you're thinking about for like getting something short, but like this is the kind of example uh, where you would come to understand the meaning of word of a word like short with different examples. So we can have something long and then something short also. So we're, we're going to compare two, two different things. Uh, but here we can also use this same idea of like, oh, we need six dollars, but oh no, I only have five. So I'm short, I'm short, all right? But let me know if that's still not clear. Again, if you have a specific example where you've heard something, try to think about the context. Where did you hear that? Who was speaking? What were they talking about? What was the situation? All right, let's see. Uh, Thayanara says, uh, why your English is easy? Well, because I, I'm a good teacher. <laughs> and basically, to be, to be a good teacher means you're making the language understandable. So number one, like I'm speaking more slowly more clearly and then I'm also not using a lot of complicated vocabulary that you probably don't know all right so I'm I'm using easier English to help you understand and I'm using examples that help you understand the language okay all right let's see what Nils got back to me sometimes I stand and sometimes it's confusing yeah Nils uh, don't worry about it what you're do what you need to do is get examples in in context and so you, you learn, okay, I can use can or could and might in the same situation in this context, but maybe in this other one, I, I use it in a different one. So at first, you're, you're, you kind of feel more confident about a particular context, but then you hear something different and it's like a counterexample, or you think, oh, I, I didn't expect uh, to use that, like that word in this context. It, like the same example before that I gave about super titles. So I didn't expect, like I would just use the word subtitles because I just thought, oh, subtitles are words that go with some kind of picture or something so you can understand what people are saying. So like my, my understanding of the word subtitle when I, was, when I was a kid, I just thought it meant words that go with a picture or a movie or something like that. But it actually is the words, like the titles, with the location of it. So subtitles as a contrast to supertitles, which goes above something rather than below it, okay? So as you get these examples, like it will feel confusing. So at first you're like, oh, like it, it actually feels a little bit uh, uncomfortable, but it also is like, wow, like that's really interesting. That's the aha moment when you understand something more deeply. And so you will have uh, examples like this, especially with words like could or might, because you will get lots of examples of these. Um, so especially if you're, uh, like if you're in Fluent for Life, you will get examples of these things, but you can also find them just looking at like on uh, Youglish or just examples on ChatGPT uh, or YouTube as well. Uh, Google will also give you lots of examples. So don't worry about it. Like you'll, you should understand a situation. So don't don't try to think about the meaning of words. It's more what does the word mean in this situation, uh, and then you will understand it better. All right, uh, Elaine from Brazil. Nice to see you there, Mary Flowers. What does echo chamber mean? Oh, that's an interesting question. An echo chamber. So an echo, echo. An echo is a sound that comes back to you. Uh, so let's say if I'm here, 
Like if I if I just stand here and, and talk in a big open space, so I, I'm making a sound, buh, 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 and it, it will just kind of continue to go. But if there's something else like a wall or something else and the sound comes back to me, that's the echo, the echo. And so a chamber is just some kind of room, all right? So an echo chamber is a room where you stand in there and if you say something, like the sound will continue to bounce around and you will hear the same thing over and over and over. So I say, hello, 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 and it just it keeps echoing like that, an echo chamber. So this is the physical understanding of what an echo chamber is. Now, you've probably heard it in the more uh, figurative usage of people, like an echo chamber would be where I, I go to a place like a physical location or I'm online in like a group uh, and I'm, I'm talking to people who just repeat back what I say. So everybody agrees about the same thing and everybody's just talking and like every, there, so there's no, it's like the opposite of debate where you have one person that believes one thing and another person believes something else and they have a, like a back and forth, they try to debate something like that. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. So when people like, let's say you get all like uh, all like people who believe in one political idea, like liberals or whatever, they all get together in one room and they're all talking to each other and they all say things and they all repeat things back to each other and they all agree. That would be an echo chamber. And this is for anybody. It's not just like for liberals or whatever. This is for for any anybody who believes one thing and it's. Uh, uh, continuing to go back and forth like that. So you will hear that a lot uh, recently, uh, mostly because now now people have uh, like specific groups or places that they can talk with each other about, uh, and they only kind of discuss ideas without having other ideas get in uh, with that as well. Uh, let's see. All right, uh, next we have, hello teacher, I have a question. I want to know the difference between immigration and migration. Well, immigration means you're like moving in to someplace and migrate just means to move. So you can immigrate, immigrate. So if we have like, I am like immigrate, like to go into someplace, or you can have emigrate, like to go out of that place. And migration by itself just means motion. So like animals might migrate, it just means like to move from one place to another, or we might migrate like my website from one server to another server. So we're just moving something like that, okay? So migration just means movement, uh, and it could mean like, like a cycle, or it could mean moving from one place to another, but immigration means to come in, and emigration, you hear the difference, I -I immigration and emigration, emigration. All right, so going in versus going out. <clears throat> and again, this is why we, we want to pay attention uh, to different contexts when we hear vocabulary. Right, good question, though. Uh, let's see. Hi from India. Thanks from Brazil. I've learned a lot with you. My pleasure, Will. Hello from Paris, France, with the fire over there. So, Lana, what is out of pocket meaning? Out of pocket, uh, like rather than something you plan on. Uh, this is an accounting term, usually for business, like you have an out-of-pocket uh, expense, but you can think about it physically like you have, uh, here's, here's your, your, your pants over here, here's a pocket, uh, and you've got money inside your pocket, so you reach into your, your pants pocket and pull the money out, so this is like an out, <coughs> out-of-pocket expense. So instead of like paying something where I, I might use a credit card or something, uh, or I might have, there, there might even be a specific accounting definition of out of pocket, uh, but it typically means like some, usually like a small expense or something that I'm paying either like with cash, I'm paying for that thing. Uh, or uh, if there is like a, a specific definition that you need for like accounting purposes. Uh, but this would be different from like regular expenses that you might have. So it's a, it's a particular kind of expense. So you're paying out of pocket for something like that. <clears throat> uh, all right. Okay, I'm gonna have to move faster. The comments are piling up. Okay, here we go, all right. 
Uh, let's see, Pablo, I've heard something like this. You left me on red. It means you didn't reply back. Or re replay? Reply? Probably reply. Left me on red. I've never not heard of that. I don't know. Maybe that's a new expression. To leave someone on red. I don't know. Try Googling that and see what you get. Davy, but could is more common than might uh, more used. Yeah, and it depends on the situation as well. Uh, so Gansham is a how to pronounce omnipotent. Uh, people here pronounce it horrible. Or you'd say horribly. Uh, they pronounce it horribly. Omnipotent. 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 And again, if you'd like to hear me pronounce words and show you how to do that, you know what to do. Get Frederick. Click on the link in the description below this video. And hear me teach you how to pronounce over 2,000 words, phrases, and sentences uh, the way I do. So if you want to pronounce things uh, naturally and smoothly, I can show you how to do that. Cam says, I'm from Thailand. Uh, wanted to get married with me. Uh, uh, I'd have to ask my wife. We'll see what she says. <laughs> I think it's hard and weird to pronounce maintain, maintain, maintenance, and another similar word which I don't remember. Yeah, so sometimes you will get words that are similar or they have similar roots like omni, becomes like omnipotent. Like we don't say omni and then potent, we say omnipotent, omnipotent. Uh, and the same thing with maintain versus maintenance, maintenance. And then you will also hear slight differences between things like, like British English versus American English and even within America, people might pronounce words a little bit differently. But this is another excellent reason why we get lots of examples from different native speakers as we learn. So if you only get examples from one person, then you will be surprised or kind of shocked when you hear different pronunciations from different people. So native speakers hear lots of different pronunciation from many different people. And you need to do the same thing if you want to become a fluent speaker. Uh, let's see. Okay, I think I answered that one already. Uh, sometime, okay, I got that one already. All right, is there a difference between uh, may and uh, may I and can I? Uh, if, you're, if you're talking about it in the context of like asking permission or being able to do something, may is actually the correct way. Like may I go to the toilet? So if a, a student is asking a teacher, uh, they should be saying, may I do something? But the language gets a little bit worse over time, and people just say, can I do something when they're asking for permission, when it's really asking about ability. Uh, so there is a difference there, but typically when people say like, oh, can I come to the party? Like, you don't need to ask the other person. You need to ask for permission, which is may I come to the party. But may almost sounds a bit more formal now because so many people use can. Uh, let's see. All right, Davis says, one thing that is difficult to me is idioms. Sometimes I guess the meaning, other times I have to search the search in the context and the meaning. Yeah, so uh, you will get these, and it's, again, a really good idea to pay attention for what natives are talking about because kids will learn idioms in these same ways. So if I'm watching a cartoon with my kids and, uh, like, a character dies, and another character says, oh, he kicked the bucket. They might not understand the idiom. They're not trying to think logically about what that means. They just associate or connect kick the bucket with dying. And so that's how you, you kind of get that. And then usually as you get older or you start learning it more as an adult, uh, you connect more with uh, the specific like the, the origin of something like that, and you can learn more about that. So if you're, if you're curious about the meaning of a particular idiom, you can look up origin of, so the origin. So go to Google or chat GPT or whatever and just say, what is the origin of, and then that particular idiom. Uh, Cable and Feist says, an echo is a reverberation. Yes, that's correct. All right, uh, let's see. Okay. Tanaria, what's your native? Uh, my native language is English, uh, but I also speak Japanese. Vinicius, hi, Drew. I would like to know what days of the week you are alive. It's boring to get the train rolling. It's boring to get the train rolling? You mean, you mean like while you're on the train? or? <laughs> uh, typically, I'm here, like it could be Thursday or Monday or both. It depends, just whenever I, whenever I feel like it. Uh, but I don't have a specific schedule, but it's usually around this time. 
Uh, I had a conversation with my boss at work in English. He thought that I've lived abroad. Are you? Well, where do you? Oh, so you, you live in uh, Brazil, right? Does it? So are you? Are you saying that with like a good meaning or a bad meaning? <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, good teacher uh, from Guadalajara, Mexico. Hello from Brazil. Big fan here. Says Ilton, nice to see you there. Body says hello. Uh, you explained so well. Well, it's my pleasure. Brazil in force here. Yes, lots of Brazilians. Yes, if you know other people in Brazil who are trying to improve uh, their speaking and they want to understand how to learn English like a native, you speak a little Polish? No, I don't. Uh, but I am from Chicago, and we have a lot of Poles in Chicago. Uh, Prashant says, a great guru. I'm not a guru. Don't call me that. I'm not a guru. I'm just a regular guy. Uh, an insurance co-pay? Insurance co-pay? Ah, oh, like out of pocket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, I mean, if you're looking for a specific, um, like a specific accounting term, then, like, that's slightly different. <clears throat> so, out of my pocket equals out of my budget. <laughs> is be careful using it like that. You wouldn't use it that way, but you can use it that way as a joke for sure. Uh, what is the best way to learn English? Maybe give us some tips. Well, there's really just one thing you need to do to learn English, and that's just learning English as a first language rather than learning English as a second language. Now, you might be new, uh, or I know some new people will probably be watching this, so I'll, I'll give my uh, very quick explanation about how this works. Uh, what's the best way? Let me get some of my delicious water first. Ah, all right. <clears throat> so uh, most of the people who are looking for help, usually they have problems. So we begin here. Uh, so these are the communication problems that people have. It could be like, we'll just make this very quick, forgetting words, uh, needing to translate, not understanding native speakers, uh, confusing grammar rules. These are the kinds of problems that people have with communication. Uh, and the reason for these problems, usually people think, so like people think, so people think that they don't study enough or they don't live in an English speaking country or uh, they don't have enough speaking practice. This is, these are the, the, the three main reasons why they think they have these problems. So because of these problems, they don't study enough, or they don't live in an English-speaking country, or they don't practice speaking enough. But none of these are true. The real reason, so the real reason, uh, the real reason you struggle to speak is because you don't understand English as well as you think you do. So there are three basic, we'll just put one, two, three here, levels of understanding a language. And so the first one uh, is just exposure. To be exposed to the language means you're hearing it. Like I could, I could go to Romania and hear Romanian speakers speaking to me, uh, and I, I don't really understand what people are saying, but I'm being exposed to the language. Uh, and next we have awareness. So awareness meaning I recognize it, I understand what people are saying, but there are, you notice now different levels of understanding. So I can hear something and not understand it at all or I can hear something and I can recognize it, or I can hear something and have what I call the ownership, which is the fluent level of understanding, which means I have enough confidence to say something, okay? So the confidence only comes at this level. And so I gave you the example at the beginning of this video uh, where I'm talking about learning a word like super. So the, the reason people have the problems they have is because they learn English as a second language. And this means that they're either learning it through their native language or they're studying it the traditional way by trying to memorize grammar rules or maybe they're studying flashcards uh, or they're getting kind of slow, easy examples that aren't, aren't really helping them understand the language. And so this gets you usually like ESL lessons will get you to the awareness level. And awareness level meaning you can understand, you can recognize things, but often it's, it's kind of like the speech that I'm giving here. So you can understand a teacher, uh, but often have trouble understanding native speakers, okay? Uh, so the, the learning English as a second language, it actually makes the language more difficult to understand. And because it's difficult to understand, you feel confused. 
and you have doubts and questions and confusion about the language like all you see all the questions I'm getting here uh, every one of these questions is really the same thing drew I'm uncertain about this point or I'm uncertain about this grammar I'm uncertain about this vocabulary or this pronunciation it's all talking about uncertainty and they have uncertainty because they learned English as a second language so I have like experience teaching English here in Japan in the classroom and most of the students are still learning this way. They have a Japanese teacher who doesn't pronounce the language very well. They're not really learning the language as a native would learn it. They're just studying rules and they're getting translations. So of course the language is difficult. They're learning it as a second language. Okay. So the, again, like people think that they, they don't speak well because they're not studying enough. But you can try to study as much as you want. You could study for 20 years and still not be a good speaker if you're not learning the right way. So the simple solution becomes learning English as a first language. And like I gave the example at the beginning of this video, that is an example of learning English as a first language. So I don't take a word like super and just like translate that into Japanese or French or Korean or Thai or whatever. I'm trying to help you understand it and, and build a network in your mind that really helps you use that language spontaneously. So at this point, if you want to speak spontaneously, you need to have the ownership level of the vocabulary, okay? So just being aware of the vocabulary, being able to recognize it, doesn't mean you know how to speak fluently. It just means you can, you can recognize vocabulary when you hear it, and it's much easier to recognize things than to speak, okay? So again, the problems that you have, they're really just coming from learning English as a second language, and second language lessons are typically difficult to understand. They create doubts and questions and problems, and that's what stops you from speaking. So it's not, it's not like the amount of vocabulary you have, it's how confident do you feel about that vocabulary. If you are 100% certain that you will speak correctly, then you speak, but if you're not and if you're not certain about speaking correctly, or if you think, well, I don't know how to pronounce this word, or maybe I'm using the wrong grammar point, or will I make a mistake if I say this word rather than that word, all those doubts that have, that's what really stops you from speaking. But if you learn English as a first language, like a native, then you actually feel confident about what you say. So you feel confident that you will speak correctly, and that's when you speak. So the big secret, like the, the big thing that I, can, that I can tell everybody, the same thing I've been sharing for 20 years, is that you don't get fluent by learning more. You don't try to like study the language more. You get fluent as you understand the language better. All right, I know that it sounds like a, like it's like, it sounds like a small, unimportant difference, but you don't just like add more vocabulary. You get fluent by understanding that vocabulary really well, like I gave at the beginning of this video, the example of super, all right? So if I give you one example, like here's a man and here's a superman, I can compare these two and think like, wow, like here's a regular man, just a regular guy, but superman is like super strong, right? So I can look at these two and slowly, oh, look at that, like a man versus a superman, I get it. But when I go to the opera and I see subtitles and supertitles, then I get an even stronger, more confident feeling about that word super. So I know, I know it means like over and above something else. So we think about it super, like super doesn't mean like really strong. It's just like over, bigger, better, higher than something else. And so rather than getting a definition, the point is to get lots of varied examples that help you understand the language like a native okay so i don't say to people you should learn like a native that's basically what you're doing but i just don't say that because people don't believe they can do it but i just i proved you can do it earlier in this video <laughs> all right but i just tell people it's it just the easy way to understand it is learning english as a first language and just do what natives are doing and so that's how you get fluent all right so we don't we don't need to study more we need to understand vocabulary better and as we do that the process of fluency speeds up all right so it accelerates we get fluent faster and faster as we learn more and we understand the language better okay
Hopefully that makes sense. So this is, I know we have new people coming, but even, you know, the, the veterans, the old people, the people who have been following me for a while, it's always good to get this review. That's why a lot of what we do on the channel is helping people review things. All right. I spent a little bit of time on that, <laughs> uh, but it's important for people to understand how that works. All right. Uh, so if you have problems with your communication, uh, you don't need to learn more. You need to understand the language better. That's the real secret. All right. Uh, all right, so al allergy, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, oh, teacher, I'm learning from West Africa in Gambia. Nice to see you there. Uh, thank you for making my English skills super. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, thank you. Lots of learning here. Glad to hear it. From Colombia, says Milton. Nice to see you there. Uh, you helped me learn English. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Really, I'm, I'm trying to, like, the learning comes from you. All I'm trying to do is make it understandable so that you naturally are like, oh, look at that. I understand. I understand what we're talking about. I followed you since you started. Wow, look at that. All right, well, thank you very much. If you know other people we can help, send them our way. Uh, let's see. Ilden says, I'm going to start teaching some English tips to close friends. I've already suggested them to follow you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you are a regular guy. Great answer. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how often are your classes? Well, the, these classes, most of the stuff I do on YouTube is just, it's giving simple examples of how to learn English as a native speaker. So how to learn English as a first language. Um, and if you want like, like classes all the time, that's what we do in Fluent for Life. Uh, so you can click on the link in the description below this uh, video. In the description, you'll see that link down there. Uh, but these live videos are maybe like once a week, maybe twice a week. Uh, Drew is not a guru. He's more like a sensei. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think you have classes with your dad about Thanksgiving. It was an amazing class. Yeah. So he, he's been in a few of those lessons uh, in Fluent for Life. All right. Uh, Sanders is super class. Our etymology and origin. Well, etymology is like specifically for words. Origin can mean anything. Like my origin, I, like you wouldn't you wouldn't talk about my etymology. You would talk about my my origin. Uh, Big Nick, uh, hi Andrew. I've been following <coughs> your lessons for about three months, and I want you to give us a lesson on English humor and jokes because it's sometimes really hard to get them and laugh with the natives. Uh, if you're if you're in fluent for life, we have lessons about that, about like sarcasm and humor. Um, and I explain kind of jokes like that. Sometimes I cover those here, but if there's a specific joke you hear that you do not get, let me know. All right, uh, al allergy, if I'm, again, if I'm pronouncing allergia, uh, super lesson, glad to hear. <clears throat> Actually, it looks like you wrote lesion. Oh, no. <laughs> I think you probably mean lesson, but le lesion, if I'm, if I'm spelling that correctly, <laughs> lesion. Uh, Solana, uh, it's really hard, or really sad that I've been learning English the wrong way the whole time. I wish I had known about your channel when I got started. Yeah, don't feel bad about that. Uh, it's not your fault that th this is the way most people teach. And, and this stuff, it's either unknown or it's ignored by most people because... Most people don't need to, like, they don't need to be, and I, I, I really won't say most people, uh, but when I'm talking about people who are learning English, like for school or trying to get a job or something like that, they don't need to become confident speakers. They just need to know some information to pass a test. So if you do need to speak, then you should be learning this way. I mean, even if you don't need to speak, this is faster than learning the traditional way as well. Um, but most people just don't think it's possible. So they, you know, they don't, they don't try. Uh, let's see, JC Cento. Hello, Drew Hobal is well with you. Hey, I'm doing great. Olympia, you are a super teacher. It's my pleasure. Easier instead of more easy. Yeah, you can, I mean, sometimes, yeah, you will hear people say like it's more easy, but like, yes, easier is the correct way to say that. Uh, Spider-Man, thank you for teaching people English. I understand English, including the difficult accents, but I am struggling to speak, says Pop. Yeah, so the, the, the things that I explain when you talk about struggling to speak, there are specific reasons why that happens. And so it's, it's, it's basically all because of this. So how you learn is how you speak. And traditional lessons make the language more difficult to understand. That Like those language lessons, they... Uh, they basically create doubts and questions and problems in your head that stop you from speaking. So humans, uh, we are not computers. We are like emotional 
beings, you know, we, we feel bad, we feel embarrassed if we make mistakes. And so we can't just learn information like, okay, here's a grammar point and we're not chat GPT or a computer where we can just take information and memorize it like that. We really need to understand vocabulary very well. And if we don't know something very well, we won't say it. So, and, and this is even in your daily life as a native speaker of your native language. So me, like, I can't talk about I don't know, like government fiscal policy or whatever in the United States, even in English, because I just don't know much about it. Like I, I couldn't, I couldn't speak confidently. I couldn't give a speech about that. Uh, I couldn't give a speech about, I don't know, some biology things like specific vocabulary for, I don't know, growing babies or something. I could explain it in an everyday way, a casual way, but I just don't. So, so it's, it's not about like knowing the vocabulary. It's how confident do you feel about that vocabulary. So if you feel you understand something very well, then you can speak about it. Uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, Mohammed Amour says from Mauritania. Nice to see you there. Elizabeth, origin and Alma are no synonyms, legit points to the study of. So etymology means the study of the study of the origin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jinjin uh, Jin says, you're a great teacher. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, in, your pr uh, is, in, in your profile is you. <laughs> You talking about my picture? Yes, I have like an old picture on YouTube and I'm too lazy to change it. So I have that one. I think actually maybe Facebook has a more recent photo of me. But Mustafa says, I am struggling to use the word though. I always use but. What am I supposed to do? Well, you don't you don't like have to use though. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just another way of ex expressing something. So you could say that. Like I understand what you're saying, but I have questions about it. I understand what you're saying, though I have questions about it. So again, like the, the reason why you might not use one word rather than another uh, is either you, you don't know it very well or you just don't feel comfortable, like it's just more comfortable to use another word. And so you will notice this in your native language. When you speak, you likely use the same words and same expressions over and over again rather than uh, like difficult things or new things or things that you feel uh on like uncomfortable about so that, that's that's another thing i mentioned in this video where we're talking about your comfort level so i want you to feel comfortable learning english as a native speaker or learning english as a first language uh, rather than trying to translate or do things as you typically as, as you typically did so most people who watch my videos that's how they begin learning english in school uh, so that's the only way they know how to learn. And so you have to change the way you learn to understand uh, and start speaking better. Uh, let's see, Gansh, I agree with you. If you learn the language as a second language, it actually makes the language difficult. Yeah, and so that's the, the, the frustrating thing about it is like you're, you think you're trying to learn it the right way. And teachers tell you that you should be learning it that way. But like the human doesn't really operate that way. So I can tell my students, hey, just be confident, go out and speak, and people, people will not follow that advice. Like it, you know, so it's actually not good advice to tell people to do that. So when I was first learning about language learning and I didn't know anything, I was like, yeah, you should speak because I just heard other people saying the same thing. But when I thought about that, I said, well, why, why do people not follow that advice? And the reason is because they don't actually feel confident about speaking and they don't want to make mistakes in front of other people, which is understandable. And so the smarter thing to do is not to try to speak more, it's to understand the language better. And that's how you get fluent. So let's see, David says, I think most English courses teach the wrong way, at least uh, in Brazil, since I've been learning the right way, I've improved a lot in the last three months. Glad to hear it. Yeah, so uh, most people and most classes, like either they don't know about this or they do know about it and they don't care or they just ignore it. So most, like, most schools, uh, they think the better way to teach is just to try to give you a bunch of rules. But this way is actually faster. It's faster for everything. So I... You know, it's weird that, that more people don't do it, but I guess more students for me, <laughs> I guess. Uh, so that like what I what I tried to do by creating Frederick uh, is creating a new. So I got I erased it up here. But if you click on the link in the description below this video, uh, you can save your children from learning this way. 
So Frederick al allows children to actually teach themselves, and it's not just for children, but especially for, for adults who have learned English the traditional way, and now they're learning uh, English as a first language, you can actually start your kids learning English as a first language too with the app. Uh, let's see, so food challenge sister, that's an interesting name. <laughs> uh, your teaching technique is awesome, so glad to hear it. Yes, I'm not doing anything different uh, than I would do with my own kids. So that's like the, uh, again, like I'm trying to help people learn the same way my own kids learn because they can only learn English as a first language. They can't learn it through another language. Although, I mean, I could use Japanese to teach them English, but that would be kind of a dumb thing to do. Neil says, I won't forget the example with supertitle and subtitle. Thank you for that. Yes. And so that, that's the whole, like, when you don't forget something, I've, I've, I've created an example that you think like, oh, wow, it, it actually sticks in your mind. That's the aha moment where you feel really confident about something. And so just do more of that. So continue to learn more like that and you will become a more confident speaker. So as you get fluent in individual words and phrases, you will feel more confident and you will begin speaking spontaneously. Uh, let's see, Wills is a tool that helped me was starting to write a diary uh, with everything I do, projects, research, et cetera. Yep. Milton says, uh, it's true because most of the teachers here teach rules and rules but students don't end up speaking fluently yeah so like you will you will know the the method by the fruit so the fruit meaning like what is the result of that thing so if your goal is to speak fluently uh a, a, another like a really like insidious or kind of i i, I don't want to say evil but it's like a it's a really disappointing thing about the traditional way of teaching uh because it, it gives, it, it's, it's relying on hope. So the, it's, it's mostly selling you like the hope that you will learn something. So the hope is that like, okay, uh, people say, how many words do you need to speak fluently? Like, okay, you need to learn, let's say 10,000, just as an example. So we start over here, we learn the first word. Like, do you feel fluent and confident about that? No, not really. Let's try another word. Do you feel fluent and confident? No, not really. Let's keep going. And so we keep going, keep going, keep going. And so the hope is that like, you will become fluent like at some point over here. And so that, that's why like, it's, it's a really frustrating thing for many people because they think if they learn more words, you remember I gave you those examples before, so people think that if they learn more words or if they live in an English-speaking country or if they speak more, that's how they get fluent. But there are people who do live in English-speaking countries and do try to speak every day and do study a lot and they still can't speak. And the reason is because they don't really understand the vocabulary as well as they think they do. And it's usually because of the uh, just the methods that they use to learn. And it's not their fault, it's just this is how everybody, almost everybody, uh, teaches languages. And this is not just English, but learning for every language. And so what I'm explaining now about learning English as a first language, it applies to everything else. So it's how I got fluent in Japanese. Once I started learning Japanese as a first language, that's when I became fluent. So it's not a complicated process, it's just changing the way you learn. And so if you don't get fluent in individual words and phrases, you won't get fluent overall and have good conversations. So if you're just learning something, but you don't really feel confident about it, you're wasting your time. You should learn something and then feel confident about it. And then, oh wow, so now I know this word, let me move on to the next word. And then uh, as I start learning more, again, the, the fluency accelerates, your progress accelerates. So this is why like people going through Fluent for Life, if they follow the program, you start learning at the beginning, you're just like getting examples of words and you start feeling confident about them. But as you hear them more and more, you really start to feel, I know the vocabulary very well and that's how I can start speaking. So I don't want you to feel hopeful. Uh, I want you to feel confident and certain. Like that's why I just focus on a word like super at the beginning of this video. So you really feel that. You feel like, ah, I got it now. I really understand that word. So you become fluent in that word. Now do it again with another word and again and again and again and the progress will speed up. And it's really a, a fast thing uh, as you continue to do it. Let's see, what time is it? How how we been doing? 10.59, okay. Going for an hour so far. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let's see. 
All right, Milton says, okay, I got that one. All right, uh, let's see. Ta, Tainara, uh, maybe I'm pronouncing that correct. Is it, is it Tainara? Uh, why can I, why can't, why I can't, you mean why can't I understand English songs? Well, it's a, it's a faster speech, excuse me, it's a faster speech, uh, it's, it's blurred, and usually the vocabulary is difficult uh, because people use idioms and cultural references and things like that. So it's a different language than what you hear in a video like mine. Uh, let's see, Mr. Mario is back. Uh, okay, let's, let's see, hey, teacher, sorry. Or I wrote, you see, I wrote, or I wrote in Portuguese. Uh, you didn't tell us your native language. Uh, my native language is, is English. Let's see. I didn't understand English, but brainstorm so much, says Ning, Ning here, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, let's see. Mom Medamore says, I understand, but I have a problem when I need to speak about specific subject. Yeah, it just means you don't know about it very well or you don't know enough about it. So if you want to speak spontaneously, you need to get more information about that thing. And so this is the, the great thing about getting fluent. You don't have to be in a particular place or be a certain age or anything. You don't have to have a person to speak with. You just need to get a lot more input about that particular thing. If you have not seen the espresso video I made, check my channel for that. Watch that video for an example. Uh, Ilden says, do you speak slower with us? I can understand 100% what you say. If I watch a movie, I understand a few things. Sometimes it seems they are speaking another language. Yes. So I'm, I'm changing the way I speak. I'm speaking more clearly. I'm speaking slower. Uh, and I'm also not using idioms and cultural references, things like that. So I'm, I'm intentionally making my, my speech easier for people to understand. So what we do in Fluent for Life is I go from this level, understanding teachers, to understanding the things in movies and real conversations, TV shows, that kind of thing. Uh, let's see, Raul says, Master, uh, it would be better if you take class every morning. Well, uh, for the people who want to learn with me every day, that's what Fluent for Life is for. And you can click on the link in the description to learn more about that. Uh, Mussy or Moosey says, Happy New Year. Manuel says, Hello. I'm not even going to stare. I've already heard a lot of fallacies here. Goodbye, teacher, Mr. Mario. Adios. Uh, I don't know what you're referring to. Let's see. Gibbs says, uh, you made a video on vocabulary where you mentioned how to use different words of the same meaning to communicate effectively. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, how long did it take you to become proficient in Japanese? Well, again, as I explained before, uh, you get fluent in individual words and phrases. So you actually become proficient in, in, like, in individual words and phrases as you learn them. So rather than this process where you, don't, you can spend years trying to learn something and, and thinking that you need to learn more words to become a fluent speaker, but you don't. You actually just need to understand that vocabulary really well. And this is why you have uh, adult non-native speakers, they know a lot of words, and they can't speak, but you have native children who know a few words and they can speak very well. So uh, when you talk about how long does it take to become proficient, like I gave the example about super titles earlier in this video, how long did that take? I don't know, two minutes or something? Uh, and so you can become fluent in something very quickly and then you move to the next thing and get fluent in that. And so you will become uh, fluent much faster that way. All right. Uh, what is your favorite book you've ever read, says Solana? Huh. My favorite book? I don't know if I have a favorite book. I, I mean, there, there are different books I've, I've enjoyed for uh, different reasons. Actually, I really, let me see. Favorite book. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Because there are a couple of books that I enjoy. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't, it's weird. I guess it depends on my mood or what, like what specifically I'm talking about. Like if you're talking about a novel or a business book or, uh, yeah, I don't know. I actually can't, I can't think of anything because <laughs> there, there wouldn't be, I couldn't give you one example and then I'd probably think about something different, different later. It's a good question, but I'd have to think about that. 
Uh, let's see. I have difficulties understanding speech, especially connected speech. Is there any strategy to improve my comprehension by listening? Uh, yes, it's the same thing I'm recommending for everything else, which is learning English as a first language. And part of that is you're getting examples of different speakers saying the same thing. Uh, so you will hear people talking about, like it could be talking about the same thing or actually saying the same thing, uh, like the same speech or whatever. Uh, again, Sham, I can speak about cars and American food because I learn a naturally varied review. I listen to watch many different native speakers talking about this. Yeah, so it's it's very it's very easy and and obvious when you when you start learning that way. So if you if you want to learn more about a particular thing. Uh, and you start studying that, you will be able to speak more confidently about it. So it's the same thing in English and the same thing in your native language as well. Uh, is it possible to get fluent in English even if I'm not so fluent in my native language? Uh, well, yeah. I, I, you, you don't have to be fluent in one language to get fluent in another. You just get fluent in different languages the same way you, you can be fluent in some words and not fluent in other words. So you will be confident uh, and comfortable using some things but not others. Uh, yes, I have a lot of uh, Brazilian students. Yeah, we got, we got people all over the world. Let's see, Milton says the ESL method that you have, we can apply it to any language. Yes, an EFL. So English as a first language, not English as a second language. The, the, the traditional, typical way of learning is you take, like people say, how do we learn another language without using our first language? And I say, well, how did you learn your first language? <laughs> That's the, the answer to that question is, you have to get understandable examples of the language like I gave with the example of super at the beginning of this video. So it is possible to do that, and it doesn't matter what language you already know. You could, you could not know your, maybe, you know, whatever your, if you're born in Mexico and Spanish is your, like, the language you should be native in, but you don't know it very well for some reason, uh, that has nothing to do with you learning English. I'm in the USA now, and I can say I'm fluent in English. A few years ago, I was in Brazil watching your videos. Thank you very much. Glad to hear it. Yes, if you know other people, yeah, lots of, we have lots of people, lots of uh, learners, students in the United States, Canada, UK, Australia, uh, and these are people from all over the world who are now in these English-speaking countries and like, ah, this is very different from the language I learned in school and now I can't speak. So yeah, we, we help a lot of people there. Uh, let's see more. Taza said, hello. I recently moved to Canada. My English is not very good. Well, keep following my videos. Keep applying this idea of learning English as a first language and you will approve. Uh, Began says, hi again. So what would you do in a situation if some joke spoken in Japan hit everyone in the room except you, although you understood the whole vocabulary in it? Uh, in that case, I would just ask somebody because that, that would, that, like, that the the understanding a joke thing uh, that specific example like i know the vocabulary but it, that means it's a it's a reference that i don't know so we could call that uh it would be like that wouldn't really be like an inside joke uh usually an inside joke is is like between two people so if i'm standing with two friends talking and they make a joke to each other i understand the vocabulary but i don't know what that's referring to then that is, that's not a vocabulary problem it's just i don't know what they're talking about so that's a that's a different problem from the vocabulary and i would just ask like what is what is the reference of that thing so that usually like a joke in that way uh Kids, if you're, if you're trying to learn kind of humor in another language, you like start with kids and look at the kind of joke things they get. A lot of those are puns. So I talk about this in Fluent for Life as well. So a pun is something like uh, where we take different meanings of, of words or something that like, like I, like I ate something. So I ate something like the sound ate sounds the same as A-T-E. So like I ate, like that's a joke for a child because it's, uh, it's, it's taking uh, a different meaning of the same sound. And so that's kind of a, a beginning way for people to learn humor. Um, and it's, it's the same thing in Japan. They're, they're, it's, it's called like a dajare, like a, like a dad joke or a pun, same idea. Uh, but my kids, they, they do that all the time. There are whole joke books just talking about that, about playing with words like that. 
So that's a, a slightly different, that's a, that's a thing where if you don't get the joke, it just means you don't know the, uh, the other meanings of something that you might use. Um, but again, like if you, if you actually don't understand something at all, just ask somebody. You, they're not gonna, it, it, you, you don't have to feel bad for not understanding a reference if you, if you don't know it. Uh, Detreklin says, sir, the plural of person is people, right? Can we say persons like three persons? Yeah, you will hear that used sometimes. Like it's almost like a, uh, like a legal or, um, it, it depends on the context though. But in general, like if you go to a restaurant, they will say how many people in your party. They wouldn't say how many persons, but on a legal document, you might see something like persons. Could you give uh, some examples of this word quixotic? <laughs> Just Google that if you're if you're looking for like an example of like what like quixotic would mean. I mean, it's here R rather than me telling you what it means, let you like discover the meaning yourself. Uh, but it's an interesting word, quixotic. Uh, Daniel says, uh, what can I do to improve my English level? I wanted to reach an advanced level, but it seems I am stuck at intermediate. Uh, that's probably the, the problem I talked about before, where you have an awareness level of vocabulary, but not the ownership level, the fluent level where you feel confident about saying things about, you know, whatever you, you, you don't feel confident talking about something. So that's usually where people get stuck. So they think they know something, so they don't review it anymore. But you know if you feel confident about something or not. So either you feel confident saying something or you do not. If you do not feel confident, it means you need to review that thing more or get more varied examples that help you understand that vocabulary better. Uh, Milton says, I've heard a lot of uh, the word ain't in many songs. Yep, yeah, ain't. Uh, Solana, another, another interesting question. What are your resolutions for the new year? Uh, my resolutions for the new year. I don't know. Just keep, keep doing what I've been doing, I guess. It's like the resolution I had five years ago, which is like just help more people. <laughs> so I, I don't even have like a new, a new resolution for this, this year, I guess. Uh, hi, teacher. My first time here. Hope you have a good day today. I am. And nice to see a little puppy right there, student June. Uh, and Bridget says, hello, teacher, Drew Batcher. Nice to see you there. All right, look at that. We got through all the comments. Amazing. All right, uh, just to do a quick recap of the video, uh, the main idea here is that if you want to speak spontaneously, you don't have to try to practice more uh, and say, like, say vocabulary more. You should really get more information and that will help you understand vocabulary better. And so as you do that, you will naturally want to feel uh, kind of more confident and, and that's what will allow you to actually speak without translating. Uh, or hesitating or thinking about grammar rules, that kind of thing. So any of the problems that you have, as I talked about, uh, all of this stuff comes from learning English the traditional way. So as you start learning more, and I want you to feel comfortable learning this way. So even you get one example with one word, if you feel more comfortable and confident about this way of learning, you will do it more. So just give that a try and continue to do that, uh, and you will notice progress very quickly. Kasim says, uh, my name is Kasim. Greetings from greetings and uh, congratulations from Turkey. And I see it. Natalia, I understand 20 to 30 percent of text. Is it worth listening to or go to a lower level? Yes, I, I would go to a lower level for sure. Um, and again, the same thing with me. Uh, I'll still like my my reading level is is lower. So maybe I will I, like, I can have a much faster conversation in, in Japanese, just speaking with people rather than trying to read. My reading is still really slow. Um, and there's a lot of kanji. These are the Japanese written characters from Chinese that I don't know. Um, so yeah, like if you, if you don't, it will also make the, the process of reading information much more enjoyable if you understand most of it. So you should understand most of a sentence so that one word or one new phrase is understandable in context. But if you don't understand most of it, that will just be really frustrating for you because you will just spend time looking things up in a dictionary or whatever. So begin getting used to the language. Um, and another thing I would do is uh, instead of reading like a long thing, whatever that is, like find something short and then get many examples of people talking about that. So whatever, if you're trying to learn how to about, uh, learn about um, 
I don't know, changing a tire on a car. So watch videos about that, read different articles or blog posts or something, and that will help you feel more confident about it uh, and learn the vocabulary better as well. Uh, Hound says, you aren't look good, you look tired. <laughs> well, after uh, speaking for 78 minutes, yeah, I feel a little bit low, but. You notice my voice tends to get a little bit, a little bit weaker uh, as I go through the video, but I'm always here to answer questions. But it looks like we did get to the end of the program, which is great. Uh, but again, remember, as you're starting the new year, think about just try to find, find some simple things that really make you feel more confident about the language and about this kind of learning. So you, you shouldn't have to hope that you're getting fluent. You should know you're getting fluent as you learn. And that will make you feel much more confident. You're learning the right way. You're actually feeling more, uh, more like you understand the language better. And you will start speaking more. It will naturally happen. You will start speaking more spontaneously. And you will feel more confident about what you say. So last couple of comments uh, came through here. Thank you very much for everything. It was very helpful. It says Nils, nice to see you there again. Sandra, thank you. Teacher Drew, awesome class. Have a nice day. God bless you and your family. Happy 2024. Kasim says, thank you very much for reading my message. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Natalia with some nice, look at that thumbs up and the hearts and boom, lot, lots of hearts there. Thank you very much. You're going to make me embarrassed over here. Uh, thanks. Have a nice day, says Juan. And Zolana, thank you so much. Yeah, don't feel bad about asking me questions. You know, it's nice to get questions about New Year's resolutions or books or whatever. I just, I just don't, I don't even know what my favorite book is would be what would my favorite book would be it depends i guess depends on my mood or what i'm talking about let's see thanks drew for taking the time to teach us and for helping us get better at understanding the language it's my pleasure Nicholson. thanks all right have a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next video bye bye